morning everybody it's Robin I wanted to pop on here and do a quick maybe not so quick video on when I first started in nursing um, on a mid-surge floor how I kind of developed a routine so to speak as best as you can because things can change quickly on a mid-surge you know, on any unit quite frankly but um, some of it was by trial and error um, I've always tried to be organized when I was in nursing school and try and have your day planned, but um, like I said, things can happen. So um, I would start off by making, I always made sure I looked professional. You know, my hair was looking nice. Um, you don't have to have a full face of makeup, but I always at least had mascara on uh, because I'm a redhead. So if I don't, my eyelashes are red, so I don't look like I feel well like people will be like you okay yeah I just don't have makeup on um I always tried to the night before I made sure my scrubs were I ironed my scrubs you don't have to iron your scrubs but at least make them look like you just didn't roll out of bed wearing them you know because I think how you look kind of puts confidence or your patients are going to have a little more if you have a nurse that looks put together and then you have somebody that looks disheveled I mean what are you thinking? So I always, and it makes me feel good. It makes me feel professional and I, that, that's just me. In the beginning, I would show up, you know, 15, 20 minutes early before my shift, you know, clock in and boom, night shift's like, you ready for a report? And I'd be like, yeah, but I, was, I didn't quite feel settled. And then it was my first week or two on my own. Um, I was following this nurse you'll get to know certain nurses. Um, okay, anyway, um, she's like, I, I really wanna go. And I'm like, okay. So we get to the doors and she's like, they're sleeping, they're fine. Um, we don't need to go in. I still was taught you poke your head in and you look at stuff. So I'm like, well, I just wanna put my eyes on them. And this one particular patient, um, had had an amputation the day prior, came back up, I guess, towards the end of the ship, the change of ship, her change of ship the night prior. And he was on a PCA pump, which kind of made me nervous because they're a little intimidating um, as a new nurse. And so I poked my head in and he, he was kind of, his head of the bed up was pretty high and he was kind of in the corner, but it looked like he was just kind of jerking. And I was like, morning, Mr. So-and-so, how you doing? And she's like, oh, he's been like that all night. That's just him. And I'm like, Mr. So-and-so, usually they kind of rouse up or whatever, but I didn't like his movement. So I had my stethoscope on me, of course, and I tried to, you know, wake him and he wasn't waking. And so I put my stethoscope on him and he was, his heart rate was, he was so tachycardic. Um, I asked her to go get the, anyway, he, he was a rapid response. First thing in my shift and that kind of freaked me out. So always, always put your head in that door, go in the room. I know some patient, if they were like, I don't need or want to hear it, I wanna sleep, then we would step out, but at least initiate and try. So since then, I took my butt to work at six, 10 after at the latest. You would have anywhere, we averaged five patients. Sometimes you got four, um, sometimes you got six. So, I, and I knew patient assignments were usually posted by six. So I was there a little after. I would pick up as many S bars as patients, you know, your um, situation, uh, your sheets, um, situation what's going on who's the patient the background the assessment and then like the recommendations what's the plan for the day and I went to the I found a little computer I didn't clock in yet this was on my own time and call me crazy but it worked for me um I found a little computer off somewhere and I started filling out my own um report sheets so I knew Everything about that patient, I was reading, I always read the H&P in the notes, why the person's there, what's the plan, and then I would usually read the day before doctor's note, and the nephrologist note, and the cardiologist note, and you know, whoever else they had on there besides the um, 
hospitalist or their personal doctor that would come in. I would also look at um, the last vitals because the CNAs would take vital signs between four and five in the morning. And if something was in red like blood pressures, I would look because again, some people you follow don't look at those blood pressures or they think, well, if something's wrong, the CNA will let me know. And then sometimes CNAs are like, I did let you know, or, you know, I'm busy too. I have to get vital signs for the whole unit. You know, when I'm doing them, you can check. Always be your own, you know, be your own person and check your own vital signs as well. Get to know your CNAs and just say, hey, quick, quick call if something's in red or quick call if something, you know, just let me know. But I always still would look because I would know in the afternoon when they would be doing blood pressures, you know, vital signs as well. I would always look, do they have a PRN med that they could get? There is, and it shows last date or time given. Did they give it? Nope, why not? So then I would look, maybe they have something scheduled at six. Nope, they don't have anything scheduled until nine. And this is a pretty significant blood pressure. So I would get with that nurse. I don't know if you know, um, kind of a, kind of a important blood pressure here. He has a PRN med, could you give it? And one particular, she always, well, he's getting meds at nine. This blood pressure is taken at four and you want him to wait for another five hours? No, 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 no. I need you to give this med before you go, please. She would. Didn't like me much, but that's okay. Um, because then that could start my day off wrong. You know what I mean? So anyway, so by the time we got around to bedside report, I pretty much already knew um, technical medical things about the patient, but then I still had some questions and I'm like, well, how were they during the wound change? You know, were they okay? Do they need, you know, things like that, personal things. Um, and also that usually kind of sets you up for meeting your patient for the first time. And I know it's really early and we tell you to rest and then we go and we wake you up, right? It's, it's never ending, but I would always smile, have a smile and good morning. I'm Robin. I'm going to be with you today, or I get to have you today for the next 12 hours, um, how'd you sleep? I always asked how they slept. And sometimes they'd be like, I slept okay, and I'm like, great. Or sometimes they'd be like, I didn't sleep well, and I'd be like, yeah, me either. We could have been up at three having a chit chat then, huh? And most times they would giggle or something, but I was always pleasant, and I looked professional. So I think that kind of helps them feel that they're gonna be taken care of that day. And I think that that's really important because I would wanna make sure if a nurse came in and or didn't come in and was just in and out and not pleasant, I'd be like, oh, it kind of makes you feel worse, you know? So I would always do that. And then um, at the same time, I'm kind of looking at the IVs, I'm looking at the, the fluid bags, which will be a point later on that I want to get to for the end of my day. Um, you know, how are they setting you up for your day? So I'm kind of looking around like, okay, well at nine o'clock I say I'm gonna have to bring in IV fluids and you know, because the bag has this much left and having a good setup for your shift could really put you just in a better mood. You're going to be more productive and such. So I'll, I'll get to that. So after report, I would sit down, then I would go to my work list. I didn't have enough time in the beginning to, to write down all the medications because let's face it on med surge, it's a ton of medications, insulin, IV antibiotics, fluids, IV antibiotics, all that stuff. So after that, I usually had, depending on how long uh, we were in a room for, if the patient needed to use the bathroom then or whatever, I would have anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour before I had to start my med pass. So on the back of each report for that patient, I would have check boxes with times, what meds underneath um, I was giving. I would make sure that they were okay because some patients get a ton of meds and I'm like, is this okay to give to each other, you know? And always, if there was a blood pressure med or something like that, or a pain med, I would always, even though vitals were taken and per policy, I could go based off the last vital signs. But like I said, things can change in five hours, four to five hours. I always still got my own blood pressure before I gave that medication. Um, so I made my to-do list for that particular patient, you know, wound care changes, 
um, if they needed to be walked at a certain time, you know, physical therapy, whatever, I kind of wrote that in their plan for that day. And then I kind of had them all spread out and I'm kind of making my own like, okay, these two are super similar. So I'm going to start him a little early or based on the rack and stack of the acuity of the patient who I'm going to start a little earlier or have to keep a better eye on. Sometimes we had confused patients and we would keep them out at the nurse's station with us. And so that's kind of a balance too, because they can't be left by themselves. But during many morning med pass, everybody could be in a room, CNAs are bathing people, nurses are giving meds. Well, who's going to watch this patient? So, you know, I kind of got with my CNAs. I said, hey, and they always had more patients than I did. And, you know, they're doing baths and bathrooms and all this stuff. So I tried to make a plan with them and they seemed to really appreciate that. And I would always be like, hey, and they got their, the finger sticks for the glucose for the um, insulin to see if they needed insulin or not. I'm like, when you get that insulin, can you just call me real quick so I know what the value is and know if I need to get that to them first before breakfast comes up. And they always did. Once you make good rapport with your coworkers, um, it just builds a great team and they're like sure robin and then i wouldn't even have to ask but they really liked me talking with them and i would be what do you have today and they'll be like well so and so you know a heavy pa patient not necessarily in weight could be but i just mean they have a lot going on to where they need help and usually cnas try and help each other but sometimes they're really busy too and i'm like well how about this how about we either knock him out first thing in the morning i'll help you with the bath we'll get him up in the chair for breakfast i always my patients were bathed every day, and if possible, they were up in a chair, at least for meals. They didn't always want to, but when I was in, you know, giving bedside report before I left, I would kind of give them, you know, the plan for the day. And they'll be like, oh, I had a bath yesterday. I'm like, all my patients get bathed, you know, and, and we made it fun. And they do feel better after a bath and sitting up. It's like I told you, you know, putting, getting your hair done, putting your makeup on, um, getting dressed up it just puts you in a better mood you know so even in the hospital they're not feeling good but they'll feel a little bit better after a bath teeth brushed all that that's just maslow's hierarchy of needs so um i would visit with them also during med pass you know get to know your patients a little bit it's amazing you know especially the older patients who you have taken care of i've taken care of fighter pilots back in the day i've taken care of teachers doctors, nurses themselves, engineers, um, scientists, inventor. I mean, get to know your patients. I mean, there's some pretty fabulous people out there. They're not just sick needing you to give them meds. They, they're they kind of needing that interaction, human interaction as well. And you really get to know the families and that can really set you up for a great day too once they really trust you and like you and maybe they're not so in your face or show up as often all the time or they just feel better knowing that they're getting you know good care um also in the afternoons between two and four we kind of lowered the lights kind of let the unit know visitors all that that it's kind of quiet time and um that was kind of in between okay we're done with our morning and noontime meds it's not quite time for um the evening rounding start yet so that's if I had a few minutes um, and nobody else needed anything I would go in and I would actually sit and talk with my patients um, and that was always a part I really enjoyed not all of them wanted company and that's fine um, but if I had a few minutes I would and then I would start setting up before I knew dinner trays and meds like I said were going to be coming out I started setting up the next shift for success. For instance, if it's an isolation room, I made sure the isolation, and usually the CNAs do this, but that's why they really appreciated help too, because I'm not one to sit on my butt and watch you bust yours. If I have time, I will help you. Even if I don't have time and you really need help, I will help you. That's just me. It's how I am and it's how I raised raised my, my new nurses. Like, this is what we do. We do this for each other. You can become your environment if you're new to a, a floor and people just don't help each other, or you can change your environment. And changing your environment takes time, but it's just you doing your thing, you being the nurse that you would want to work with, and you helping people, whether they're mean to you or not in the beginning. Heartaches crack too. 
they will eventually know you're a team player. Will some people take advantage of you? Sure, but you'll you'll learn who not to necessarily, <laughs> you know, help all the time, you know. Um, but anyway, like I said, if I knew um, IV bag and tubing was gonna have to be changed at the 24 hour mark, maybe that was 2300 after my shift, I still made sure that they had bag and tubing at the bedside or outside on the isolation cart. If there was a Q6 wound change that was gonna be due on their their shift, I made sure that all supplies were there because I did it on mine. So when I grabbed mine for that wound change, I grabbed double so that it was already there at the bedside for that for night shift. So they don't have to leave the room, especially when you're in an isolation room and you have to, you realize you don't have something or man, no more chuck pads. So you have to ungown or you can't call, everybody else is busy. So I made sure inside and out that the rooms were set up for the next shift. If the, um, and I, I usually would do this, like I said, in the afternoon if I had time or maybe at during um, med pass in the evening, I would, my patient might need something uh, and I would notice we're low on chucks or low on linens they go through often. I always made sure that they were there for the next shift. So setting up your next shift I feel is very important because like I said when I came in and I would see I would constantly have to start all these IV fluid bags again right off because they're all low or I didn't have I got in the room and I have to gown up to go into a room and I notice I don't have anything it just kind of puts you mentally in a pissy sp <laughs> get a little pissy <laughs> but that's when if that nurse is back the next night you say hey you know what you have this here, it's already here for you. And they'll be like, oh, thanks, you're welcome. And hopefully, eventually, they'll catch on and do the same for you. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but still be that nurse that you're proud of being. So these are just some of the simple, easy things I did starting off, um, this video is getting kind of long. And I have more specific videos of ideas for later but this was just how I kind of developed my style and my routine first off and like I said um, I really liked setting up my S bars knowing my patients well before change of shift because sometimes things get lost lost in report so by reading notes and stuff I could kind of ask how something went and they'll be like oh yeah I forgot about that thanks you know or some some nurses were like, well, you know everything already. Well, no, I don't. I'm just setting myself up. You know, I know basics, yeah. And I know I've checked your stuff, not to be that nurse to check your stuff, but I've been left in pretty crappy situations. So to get away from that, yeah, I'm checking on things. Feel free to come early and check on me. I mean, I could have forgotten something too or forgot to tell you something in report. And many times on the ride home, I, I'm like, man, I forgot to tell her this. I would pick up my cell phone and call the unit and say something to her or like, hey, I told him at this time we would do that, you know, whatever. So let me know how you guys developed your routine. Let me know if this helps you if you're going to be a new nurse. Congratulations to uh, you new nurses that are past nursing school and getting ready to take your NCLEX or you have taken it and you've passed, especially with this time of you probably having to do things online instead of in person because of COVID. I'm so proud of you all and congratulations. Let me know where you're working. Let me know how you're doing and let me know if any of this has helped. And um, again, seasoned nurses, let me know how you developed your routine and what it was. I, I'm really curious because I still feel like we can learn from each other and I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.